This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Polar Lights Grissom and Bird of Prey, Bronco's Flam Panzer II, Flyhawks Bismarck, Edward's Muchabella P39, and Tamiya's M3A1. New product rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs, and by Cult TV Man's Hobby Shop, the place to go for science fiction and fantasy kits, details, masks, decals, and more. Welcome to the new product rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly video show where we show you today's hottest kits and accessories. I'm Elizabeth Nash. I'm Aaron Skinner. Let's get started with something fun in the form of Polo Light's latest Star Trek kit. It's a double kit featuring the USS Grissom and a Klingon Bird of Prey. These ships played critical roles in Star Trek III, the search for Spock. Now, the Bird of Prey has been seen in plastic before in the form of a 1 3 50th scale kit from AMT Ertl. This kit adds one in constant scale with many of Polo Light's other Trek kits. The only other Grissom kits released before this were either vacuum formed or resin. See, these are snap it kits, so they're designed to fit together without glue, although many of us will use it to fill seams and, you know, kind of make the assemblies a little sturdier. The Grissom comprises just 10 parts to produce a model that's less than 5 inches long. The white plastic has decent surface detail, including recesses on the upper side of the primary hull and recessed vents and louvers on the top and bottom of the engine deck. The secondary hull has recesses for the sensors on the lower half and one-piece engine pylons molded with the upper half. Each of the warp engines builds from three pieces. The major front upper section, a lower panel with half of the warp field grill, and the grill's other half. The Bird of Prey is a more complicated design, so it consists of twice as many parts molded in a lovely shade of green. Part breakdown feels a little like a scaled down version of the 1 3 scale kit. That's not a bad thing, since that was one of the best Trek kits up to that time. There's the main hull in upper and lower halves. Surface detail reflects the busy, greebly heavy look of the filming miniatures. The finished model will be a little more than four inches long. The main parts of the warp wings are single pieces with nice detail top and bottom. The wing tips, with integrated disruptor cannons, attach to the main wings. The wings can be posed either in flight or attack position with optional hinge plates. Clear parts provide the rear impulse engine emitters and the photon torpedo launcher. Stands support both ships. There's a pretty good sized decal sheet with wing markings and hinge baffle stripes for the Bird of Prey and a lot of panels, stripes, and equipment for the Grissom. Alternative registry numbers are given to mark the Federation survey ship as the Oberth, Cochrane, Vico, or Pegasus. This small pair of ships is a welcome addition to Polo Light's Trek lineup and should look right at home with the other kits on your shelf. Great investment. From Bronco, here's a 135th scale Panzer Kampfwagen II Flam. Also known as the Flamingo, the vehicle mounted two flamethrowers on either front fender. The base of the vehicle is the Panzer II Osferung E. Produced in small numbers, the E married the D's torsion bar suspension with new lubricated tracks. That change required new drive sprockets with a single row of teeth inside rather than two rows on the outer edges, idlers, and road wheels with separate tires. The same arms as the ALF's D attach the running gear to the lower hull sides. The rest of the hull comprises the belly, rear panel, glasses and driver's plates with separate transmission hatches, engine deck, and turret plate. Many smaller parts like hinges, lights, and tools are separate and finely molded. The full-length fenders feature well-molded detail and diamond plate texture, as well as the mounts for the flame units. Each of those units consists of a body made of halves, a hinged lid, and the barrel. The rest of the flame system's external parts are the compressed nitrogen tanks inside armor boxes on the fenders. Smoke grenade launchers mount behind the nitrogen tanks. A small turret finishes the tank. It features movable vision blocks, a detailed commander's hatch, and an MG-34 with breech and other interior detail. Clear vision blocks, periscope, and headlight lenses are provided, and a photo etch fret provides the exhaust cover, spare track racks, support brackets, and other small details. Decals provide markings for three vehicles in overall dark gray. German armor builders will be pleased to add this detailed kit from Bronco to their portfolio. There are a few ships that attract modelers of all stripes, and the Bismarck is one of them. Now Flyhawk, which does outstanding 1 700 scale ships, turns its attention to the ill-fated German battleship. And it looks as good as the manufacturer's other efforts. This is a full hull kit with the 14-inch hull divided along the waterline. A waterline plate and metal weight are in the box if you prefer a waterline model. In addition to thin strikes and propeller shaft details, the lower hull has internal braces molded in. The upper hull sports portholes, ladders, and minute mooring attachments. A one-piece deck has molded chains, fine plank texture, and a few tiny fixtures. 
Moving up, the major superstructure components are molded as larger pieces, including the first layer that features deck planks, hatches, and portholes. The finesse of the detail on these sections, including the bridge tower, aircraft hangars, and funnel, is first rate, with fine plumbing, thin splinter shields, and more. On the armament front, the four main turrets comprise upper and lower halves. The instructions call to use the slide molded main guns with blast bags, but optional movable barrels, also with open muzzles, are included. The secondary armament of six 15 centimeter turrets and eight 10.5 centimeter gun positions are incredibly fine. Several different anti aircraft guns round out the weapons. There are way too many small details to go over between the props and masts, boats, and rangefinders and gun directors. A pair of Arado AR-196 float planes is also included, and they can be built with the wings folded or out. Decals provide markings for the planes, including fuselage serials. There are also Kriegsmarine flags and the deck flags that were added in early 1941, although those are not called for in this kit. The only photo etch provided here is for part of the catapult. No railings or ladders are provided. I expect Flyhawk to produce aftermarket details soon. This looks like an outstanding small-scale Bismarck. If you need some help detailing it, check out Osprey's Anatomy of a Ship, the Battleship Bismarck. Over more than 330 pages, the book shows the ship in illustrations and scale drawings. Everything you need to get your model right. Edward continues to produce interesting limited edition boxings of other manufacturers as well as its own kits. The latter is the case with this release, Bella, which includes two full kits of Edward's 148th scale Air Cobra. This covers some of the more than 4,500 P-39 sent to the Soviet Union under Lend-Lease. Edward's P-39 molds date to 2000, but the parts look great with fine recessed panel lines on the airframe. A decent cockpit can be seen through the poseable doors and detail in places like the landing gear. The doors are on the clear parts and pre-cut masks aid painting the canopy, wheels, and wing walks. Photo etch parts enhance the cockpit with panels and seat belts and provide landing gear details, engine grills, and more. As with Edward's other limited edition kits, the decals are what really make the package sing. The cartograph sheet has markings for 10 P-39s of the Soviet Air Force. The terrific instructions give four view drawings of each option with notes about the pilots and idiosyncrasies of the markings. A very nice release from Edward. Finally, here's something that just arrived at FSM and we wanted to get into the MPRD as soon as possible. To me is 135th scale M3A1 scout car. The ultimate version of the White Motor Company scout car. The M3A1 was manufactured from 1940 to 1944. In that time more than 20,000 were produced and they served in just about every theater of World War II as well as for decades afterwards in numerous countries. To me represents the chassis as a single part with cross members, the oil sump and transmission, as well as the lower part of the winch. There's more to the suspension including the leaf springs for front and back, engine parts, drive shafts and axles, with separate differentials, steering mechanism, and two-part wheels with good hub and tread detail. The truck's body builds around a floor with diamond plate patterning on the front and back, sides with fine recessed panel lines and rivets outside and in, a matching rear panel, separate upper door panels, hood, and fenders. The kit gives you the option of building the radiator's louvered cover closed or open with separate slats. There is also an option to pose the armor cover for the windshield closed or open with a separate frame and plate. Cab detail includes firewall, controls, pedals, and steering wheel, dashboard with decal dials, and seats. To fill the troop compartment in the back are six seats, storage cabinets over the wheel arches, tracks for the machine guns, and plenty of ammunition boxes. The mounts for the 30 and 50 caliber machine guns are designed to move. Other features include a moving unditching roller for the front and a detailed rear bumper with supports. Clear parts provide the windshields and headlight lenses. Typical of Tamiya, the kit includes figures, five Soviet soldiers in winter quilted uniforms. All are in action poses and designed to fit specific spaces in the vehicle. Those figures suit two of the three marking options covered on the decal sheet. Both are Red Army M3A1s in early 1945. The third option is an American 2nd Armored Division vehicle in Sicily in 1943 with two color camo and oversized national insignia. Typical of Tamiya, this looks like an easy build with plenty of opportunity for detail and display. Look for a review of it in an upcoming issue of Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. Which is where you will also find reviews of the Bismarck and the Grissom and Bird of Prey kits. You can also find more new product information in the November issue, on sale now, as well as at our website, www.finescale.com. Thanks for visiting finescale.com. We hope you've enjoyed the show and we hope you have a scary good Halloween. There are way too many small details to cover in detail. What? <laughs> there are way too many small details to go over between the... <laughs> One more time. <laughs> I'm trying to keep my 
jewelry from clinking together, so I'm standing like this. 